Hello everyone, welcome to our monthly InfoSec seminar organized by the Information System Security and Assurance Management Department in Mihalshan School of Management. Uh, as we said, like October is the Cyber Security Awareness Month and we are pleased to, today to have Mu'taz Ahmed to give us an interesting talk about overview of the Communication Security Establishment, Canadian Center for Cyber Security and the Cyber Skills Shortage in Canada. Mu Ahmed is a senior cyber engagement analyst, part of the academic outreach and cyber skills development team at the Canadian Center for Cyber Security. Mu has been working at the Canadian Center for Cyber Security and the Communication Security Establishment for over a decade, where he also previously held various positions such as client relations offices and intelligence analyst in the counterterrorism division, just to mention a few. Mu has also worked in a law enforcement and hold, holds a political sciences degree from Concordia University in Montreal. Thanks, Mu, for being with us today and sharing your experience with us. So it's all yours now. Hey, thank you very much. Hi, can, can you just confirm that you can hear me? Yes. Perfect. All right, well, thank you very much, Dr. Abdullah. Uh, hello, everyone, and uh, thank you for giving us the opportunity to, uh, to speak to you today about the Cyber Center and the Communication Security Establishment and uh, about our team, the, uh, the Learning Hub that's within the Cyber Center. Uh, just uh, uh, after the, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Abdullah's uh, introduction, I'd just like to introduce myself and, uh, and my colleague. Um, so my name is Mo uh, Ahmed, and uh, I presently work as a cyber engagement analyst at the, uh, at the Cyber Center. And I also have with me um, my supervisor, actually, Marie-Claude Belanger, who is um, also following along um, and would be able to help me take some questions at the end uh, of this presentation. Uh, please just let me know, uh, Dr. Abdullah, if, uh, if the sound is not too clear. I know we've had uh, a little bit of technical issues uh, uh, earlier earlier on. So uh, I can attest that uh, uh, we're both very excited to uh, to present to your uh, to your organization to uh, Concordia University of Edmonton today. And uh, I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank Dr. Uh, Dr. Islam Abdullah and Sean Thompson for reaching out and uh, organizing this event. I also uh, would like to mention that I've learned that your Master of Information Systems Assurance Management is celebrating its uh, 10th anniversary uh, next year. And uh, along with the Master of Information Systems Security Management, as well as your graduate diplomas um, in the field, uh, have been evolving uh, in the industry for the last 20 years. So uh, I'd like to take this, uh, this opportunity to congratulate um, uh, Concordia University of Edmonton on this great achievement. Um, especially in a field uh, where many of the academic institutions have uh, unfortunately uh, fallen behind. Uh, I'd also like to thank, um, uh, congratulate Dr. Uh, Dr. Sergei Budakov uh, from the Concordia University of Edmonton, uh, who's led the way in developing uh, a new program, the Undergraduate Management Program, uh, with emphasis in cybersecurity, that will be starting, um, from my understanding, in the fall of 2023. Uh, it's the first uh, of its kind program, and uh, it's uh, th that's being offered to uh, students in the field of computer science and IT. So, congratulations on uh, on that achievement. Um, so, before uh, before we start, I just want to quickly remind you that please refrain from reproducing the content of this presentation. Uh, the slides and the recording will be made available to you at the end of the uh, of the presentation. Uh, so the presentation is divided into four different um, different parts. Uh, we'll have a quick overview of the cyber center, including the communication security establishment. Then we'll talk about the learning hub, which is um, sort of our division within the cyber center. We'll also talk about the academic outreach and cyber skills development, which is our team. Uh, as well as additional uh, resources that can be uh, that can be of use uh, to anybody in the field. So the Canadian Center for Cybersecurity. So who are we? Um, so what is the Communication Security Establishment and the Canadian Center for Cybersecurity? 
So the Canadian Center for Cybersecurity is part of the communication security establishment. And I'll talk about the, the about CSC or the communication security establishment in a, in a couple of minutes just to explain what it is. It's an organization that has been around for a long time, but is not as popular as, um, as many other organizations or departments in the government of, within the government of Canada. Um, so the Cyber Center is the single unified source of uh, expert advice and guidance and services and support to cybersecurity for Canadians. And it only opened in 2018 as a uh, key initiative under the Canada under Canada's national cybersecurity strategy. So before the Cyber Center, which, uh, as I said, is only four years old, we have the communication security establishment. So. Uh, the so CSC, commonly known as CSC, um, is a federal organization which, uh, as I said earlier, many people uh, may not have heard of. Um, I know that before I applied to CSC, I, I didn't even know it existed. But it's actually Canada's uh, foreign intelligence agency. So um, I know most people know the know or heard of CSIS, the Canadian Security Intelligence Services, because it's an organization that deals with what we call human, so intelligence that is of human um, sources. Whereas the Communication Security Establishment is an organization, it's Canada's national cryptologic agency, uh, but it's also an organization that deals with uh, another type of intelligence, which uh, we call SIGINT, so signaled intelligence. Um, so what the communication security establishment uh, does, it's, as I said, it's Canada's national cryptologic agency. So it provides the, uh, the government of Canada with information, technology, security, but also foreign signals intelligence. And um, CSE actually ce celebrated its 75th anniversary uh, last year. So I'll share a brief snapshot of CSC's history and um, how it came to be. So CSC uh, was born um, of World War II code-breaking efforts by the what was called back then the Communications Branch of the National Research Council. Um, and if I can just mention, um, CSC is a lot of people will know their its equivalent. Um, a lot of people know the organizations in Canada by their equivalent in the United States because they're more more popular. So, um, if we were to say CSC, the equivalent in the United States is the NSA, so the National Security Agency. And I'm sure a lot of people have heard uh, more about that one than than about CSC. So, uh, the, before CSC came to came to exist, it was the Communications Branch of the National Research Council, and um, you you may know of the British efforts uh, to do this. Um, uh, so maybe you saw the movie The Imitation Game. Um, either way, it's 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 a little known fact that similar efforts were going on here in Canada as well in terms of code breaking and um, uh, during the uh, world during World War Two. So after the war, uh, after the war. Um, and into the Cold War, those efforts continued, and in those efforts continued. And in 1975, CSC was formed, operating under the National Defense Act to collect foreign signals intelligence, as I said, known as SIGINT or signals intelligence. Now, uh, as the world became a more and more digital place, CSC's work began to focus on digital and internet communications. So while most of the organization was still focused on top secret work, uh, of gathering signals intelligence, more and more uh, the government was recognizing that there was a lot of work to do uh, to defend not only the government of Canada networks, but important Canadian digital infra infrastructure. So it was becoming increasingly uh, apparent that we couldn't do this uh, from behind closed doors, and slowly our organization had to step out into the light, so to speak. So uh, in this slide, next slide, you have uh, just the pictures of the two buildings. Um, the Vanier building, uh, the one on your right, is where the Canadian Center of Cybersecurity for Cybersecurity is based. And on your left is the headquarters of the Communication Security Establishment. Uh, it is for those that know Ottawa. It is uh, it is on Ogilvy, right next to the right next to the headquarters of the Canadian Security Intelligence Services (CSIS). So fast forward, fast forward until now, um, 
In October 2018, the Canadian Center for Cybersecurity was born as essentially um, a new branch from an old business line of IT security. So it's providing cybersecurity advice, guidance, and services to Canadians. Um, so we can see in this slide that there, these are sort of the four mandates of the communication security establishment, so as a whole, and only part of it, which is the green part on your right, which is um, the part that is uh, that the cyber center, the C Canadian Center for Cybersecurity falls falls under. So uh, as the uh, so the the four main branches um, of the communication security establishment is for first uh, first of all the um, foreign signals intelligence, so SIGINT, as we uh, as I said earlier, and that part is in charge of that part uh, is basically um, to alert the government to activities of foreign entities uh, that seek to undermine Canada's national prosperity and security. So basically, foreign-based cyber threats, espionage, terrorism, kidnappings of Canadians abroad—all these are fields um, in which signals intelligence and people that work in signals intelligence uh, operate in. Um, as I said, as Dr. Abdullah mentioned um, in the beginning, uh, I, I did work um, in the signals intelligence side for most of my uh, most of my career at, at CSC, including uh, the counterterrorism branch. So this was all part of the uh, signals intelligence uh, division. So the information that's gathered from the signals intelligence uh, division it's to inform the government of Canada of actions and decisions to combat these threats espionage, um, counterterrorism, and so on. It also supports the government of Canada's decision-making and policy-making in defense, uh, in security, and in international affairs uh, by providing important insights into global events. So that's one, that's the first um, mandate or one of the mandates uh, of the communication security establishment. The second one is assistance uh, to federal security and intelligence partners. So CSC, as, as you can imagine, has unique uh, technical and operation, operational capabilities, and it's authorized uh, by law to assist other federal organizations. So the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, the RCMP, uh, Canadian Security Intelligence Services, CSIS, Canada Border Services Agency, CBS, CBSA, the Canadian Armed Forces, the Department of National Defense. So all these are organizations that CSC by law uh, can uh, provide assistance to to help them carry out their uh, lawful uh, lawful mandates. The third part is foreign cyber uh, operations. So CSC is, op is authorized, and um, maybe some of you would have heard of that, but CSC, uh, we used to, as I said earlier, we were under the National Defense Act, and now CSC, as a standalone agency, has its own uh, act, the CSC Act. Um, and because of, there there were certain things that changed uh, because of the CSC Act. So CSC is now is authorized to conduct foreign cyber operations to help protect Canada and Canadians. So these operations can be uh, maybe defensive or active. Now the defensive part was in the National Defense Act um, when CSC was under the National Defense Act, but the active part uh, became more prominent um, with the the CSC Act. So defensive cyber operations. Um, will are to defend Canada against foreign cyber threats. So by taking online action, um, for example, CSC could prevent cyber criminals from stealing information from a government of Canada network or uh, by disabling their, their foreign server, um, for instance. Uh, active cyber operations, on the other hand, allow CSC to take online action to disrupt the capabilities for, of uh, foreign threats to Canada. So, for example, CSC could prevent a foreign terrorist group from communicating or planning attacks by disabling their communication devices. And finally, the fourth uh, part of the mandate of, uh, of, of the communication security establishment is the cybersecurity information assurance. Um, and that's, that's the part which um, the Canadian Center for Cybersecurity falls under. So, um, the cybersecurity information assurance is to help defend non-government of Canada networks, such as uh, academic institutions, for example, 
This is where the Cyber Center mandate, um, the Cyber Center mandate falls under. Uh, so through the Canadian Center for Cybersecurity, we defend the government of Canada's networks. We advise and assist other levels of government and the operators of Canada's critical infrastructure, such as uh, banks, telecommunication companies, and other companies that are essential for the functioning of our society and our, and our economy. Um, we also offer uh, simple and effective tips that all Canadians can use to help keep themselves um, safer online. As we know, especially with the pandemic, there has been more and more uh, activities, online activities, uh, targeting uh, Canadians, whether it was because of the, um, um, well, especially because of COVID, uh, a lot of Canadians were targeted uh, by uh, hacking or, um, you know, phishing uh, activities online. And so this is part of, um, of our mandate, and it's to offer these simple and effective tips um, for people that are not necessarily um, computer literate. If I, if I can say. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about the services um, that, and products that, are, uh, that the Cyber Center uh, offers. So the Cyber Center offers many services and products, which are, by the way, all free of charge. Um, so one of them is the single service window. So this is a single entry point where one can log in and access information uh, or services that uh, that one is signed up for. And uh, I've been I've been in the cyber center for a little bit over two years, and I can tell you that these services are evolving um, almost on a monthly basis. I mean, I look at the services that were offered two and a half years ago by the cyber center when it was still uh, a new organization, and the services that are offered, man. I mean, we've uh, the cyber center has done a lot of um, it, it, it tremendously evolved. And um, one of the one of the services that that recently um, came to exist is the single entry point. So it basically, instead of sending our the, the information and uh, to to our clients and the organizations, we are allowing them to a, to be able to log in and they can access the information that they've uh, that they've signed up for. Um, the other thing is the inclusive learning hub. So. This is a place where courses are offered for private organizations, but also for other government departments. Uh, we also have integrated incident response. So the Cyber Center also provides incident response coordination and standby support for major planned events. Uh, so when there are you know, uh, events that are major in Canada, the Cyber Center will be there to offer uh, coordination. I can give you an example uh, for, for instance, the Olympics or the G7. Uh, these are all uh, major, uh, you know, planned events that the Cyber Center uh, does offer, coordinate to offer incident response. Uh, the, another one is expert advice and guidance. So in cases of cyber incidents, uh, depending on the nature and the severity of the case, of course, the incident uh, management team can offer many, uh, many services. For instance, victim notifications. Uh, they will offer tailored advice and guidance um, depending on the specific um, uh, case, recovery assistance, uh, and analysis reports, and uh, even digital forensics. So these are just some of the services that the Cyber Center um, offers uh, to Canadians, Canadian departments, um, uh, federal departments, and um, essential, basically, in infrastructure organizations. Um, now, if you can allow me to just talk a little bit about our specific division, which is the Cyber Center Le uh, Learning Hub. Uh, so the Learning Hub is your source uh, for cybersecurity and ComSec learning activities and programs. Um, our training services are available to those working within the Government of Canada, but also with uh, critical infrastructure uh, organizations. Um, the Learning Hub offers uh, basic, advanced, and specialized courses and workshops uh, that assist the community to achieve enhanced cybersecurity knowledge and, uh, and skills. The Learning Hub also conducts academic outreach and engagement activities uh, by working with the academic community and the private sector educators to build cybersecurity talent and uh, capacity in Canada. So um, 
on the next slide, you're going to you're going to see the three teams that are under the learning hub. Um, so the first one is the design and development team, and they will develop and design and update existing courses so that it can um, you know fit the current uh, the current situation. And they will uh, they'll identify and analyze um, the client requirements in terms of um, in terms of addressing gaps uh, in curriculums. The second team, which is um, uh, the team I worked under um, and that Marie Claude um, supervises, is the academic outreach and cyber skills development. So that's our team, and we support the development of cyber skills in the academic sector. So. You know, events like this, for example, where we will reach out or we will be reached out to by um, academic organizations, um, and we'll try to support and develop uh, the cyber skills. Uh, we'll also promote the integration of cybersecurity curriculum in Canada's education system, and uh, we try to work close with, um, you know, school boards uh, throughout the country, across the country, ministries of education, uh, to try to integrate as much as possible uh, cybersecurity curriculums in the education system. And we also support cybersecurity career development initiatives uh, through events and education campaigns with the Government of Canada and uh, as well as academia. Uh, the third team under the learning hub is the develop the, the delivery, excuse me, the delivery and uh, evaluation team, and they will, uh, you know, they'll they'll enhance classroom and virtual course delivery. So they are the ones that deliver the actual courses, and they'll evaluate and uh, improve uh, course curriculums. Uh, so these are the three teams that are under under the learning hub. So, uh, if you can allow me to talk a little bit about, uh, once again, our team, the Academic Outreach and Cyber Skills Development. Uh, so, our team supports the development of Canadian skilled talent in cybersecurity and in all academic disciplines and education levels. So, we have four main goals. Uh, the first goal is to align cyber career paths with the needs of the labor market. And as you'll see, um, I'll talk a little bit uh, later about it, but there is a huge um, there's a huge demand for uh, within the labor market for cybersecurity experts. Uh, the second goal is to support the development of cyber skills in the academic sector. Uh, a third goal of our team is to promote the integration of cybersecurity curriculum in Canada's education system. And um, last but not least, the fourth goal is to support cybersecurity career development initiatives, events, uh, education campaigns uh, within the government of Canada, um, you know, amongst the government of Canada departments, but also with the acad with academia. Now, this next part um, I found extremely interesting. Um, these are some statistics about cybersecurity, um, and if you can pay attention to this, because I. For one, when I found about this, uh, found out about this, I was extremely uh, um, surprised but alarmed at the same time. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about first about the labor mark, uh, market trends in the cybersecurity field. So many cybersecurity jobs are unfilled at this time across the nation. So how do we ensure to fill the gap and keep Canada uh, and its sector secure? I'll offer um, an overview of the current state and trends in the cyber world, uh, as well as cyber skills gap and uh, the cyber skills gap that we are facing today, and what it means for those that are joining the workforce. Uh, we're all, we're also promoting uh, the role of women in the cybersecurity field. Uh, I'll talk about that uh, a little later on, and uh, how essential it is in helping secure uh, the country. So this slide uh, talks about global trends and numbers. And as I said, please pay attention to those and you'll see that it is quite um, quite interesting. So if we look globally, the, the shortage, and we're talking just the shortage of cybersecurity professionals is estimated to be 2.72 million. And it's important to note also that within the last uh, few years, we've seen a huge increase. So on a yearly basis, these numbers that you're gonna see are increasing. Um, the total cybersecurity job, job openings, 500, almost 600,000 job openings. The total employed cybersecurity workforce, 
over a million. Um, and we can take a look at the, and this is based on the Bureau of Labor Statistics and the U.S. Department of Labor. Um, but I mean, these are globally. So the, the, these are, it's information that is, you know, that would be useful and that would be comparable to Canada, obviously on a lower scale. So the most important technical skills that are, um, that are sought after are, uh, 25% are cloud security, 17% data analysis, and 14% are coding and programming. Uh, the top cybersecurity job titles, um, I, I, you can see them. I mean, I won't mention them all, but amongst them are cybersecurity analysts, uh, managers, consultants, software developers. So there are quite a few uh, positions that are, that are, uh, that are required. Uh, again, the top areas of professional development being pursued are cloud computing security, um, risk assessment, uh, threat intelligence analysis. So there are, it's basically to, to show that there are so many fields um, and so many positions that, can, that, that need to be filled uh, within the cybersecurity, um, within, the, within cybersecurity. Um, so the next slide I'm talking about uh, the gap. So mind the gap. So we're seeing um, the same trends in Canada, as I said, on a lower scale compared to the United States, but still the same trends uh, where we have a large deficit of workers um, with the knowledge required to protect our information um, and systems. Uh, in fact, 82% of employers have reported a shortage. And that's, I mean, that's a quite significant uh, percentage, 82% of employers have reported a shortage, and 71% believe the shortage, shortage has caused uh, measurable damage. There are 5,000 positions right now that need to be filled by cybersecurity professionals. In demand, the number of jobs for cybersecurity professionals in Canada is growing by 7% every year. So as I said, we've seen a, a huge um, increase in the last few years. Uh, 1.8 million is the number of unfilled cybersecurity positions that will by 2022, by this year. And it's also important to note that it is a well, uh, it's a well-paid um, field. I mean, the annual average salary of a cybersecurity professional in 2021 was $86,843. Uh, if we compare that to other fields, it is a, it is a well-paid uh, field. So that makes the, sh the shortage of cybersecurity professionals uh, a growing challenge. Um, a survey by the Toronto Financial Services Alliance uh, shows demand for cybersecurity talent growing 7% a year as a, a year, as I mentioned earlier, with 8,000 unfulfilled, unfilled uh, cybersecurity jobs forecast that by 2021. But uh, as I said, that's a um, that's a 2019. Um, those are 2019 statistics. But regardless, it doesn't matter the numbers. What matters is that the demand for cybersecurity professionals is acute, it's uh, immediate, and it's growing. And um, we, we need to remove these, uh, those adjectives. So what will the new uh, uh, economy look like? More than 25% uh, of Canadian jobs will be heavily disrupted um, by technology in the coming decades. So um, a 2018 report by RBC called Humans Wanted, How Canadians Can Thrive in the Age of Disruption, it lists 10 key findings, uh, two of which uh, I'd like to discuss. So the first one is the first one is the first prediction is that 25% of current jobs and we're talking about all jobs, not just highly technical jobs. All jobs will be heavily disrupted over the next decade. And half will go through a, sig a significant overhaul. The eighth key finding is that the digital, the digital fluency will be an essential skill for workers, our, our graduates. So the cybersecurity industry and its value chain contributed to, and that again is a very um, interesting, uh, th these are very interesting numbers. So the cybersecurity industry and its value chain contributed over 1.7 billion in GDP and 16,750 jobs to the Canadian economy, direct um, and indirect. 
Consumer spending by associated employees contributed an additional $595 million to GDP and supported 5,760 jobs. And Canada sees 25,000 unfulfilled cybersecurity jobs as um, ha- hacking activity soars. Uh, the cybersecurity industry is looking to fill 3.5 million jobs worldwide by bridging the gender gap. So the impact on world economy. So hacking activities and breaches are increasing. And as as I said earlier, um, pretty much everybody noticed, especially with the the beginning of the pandemic, the increase in in hacking activities. Uh, Cybersecurity Ventures official cybercrime report mentioned that in 2021 alone, cybercrime is estimated to have caused more than 6 trillion US dollars in damage, up from 3 million um, three trillion U.S. in 2015. So in six years, it doubled from three trillion U.S. dollars to six trillion. So if cybercrime, and that's pretty alarming. But if cybercrime were measured as a country, it would have the third largest GDP in the world after the United States and China. So that just shows the the impact that this has uh, globally. So closing the gender gap in cybersecurity, um, cybersecurity has become one of the hottest and fastest growing fields in technology across the globe today. Despite the continuous growth growth in cybersecurity spending and opportunities, uh, women's representation in the cyber workforce remains low, even even more so than, than in IT. Uh, we actually recently attended a webinar about uh, Canada's top women in cybersecurity, which made us glad that there are certain pioneers in cybersecurity that are women in Canada, and uh, the work is being done, uh, the great work that is uh, being done to close to close the gender gap. There are certain organizations that promote women in cybersecurity and try to close the gender gap in that field. 1,091,575 total employed cybersecurity workforce shows the estimated number of workers uh, employed in cybersecurity related jobs from May 2021 through April 2022. 714,000, um, over uh, close to 715,000 uh, are the number of online job listings for cybersecurity related positions from 2021, May 2021 to April 2022. Uh, historically, Underrepresented in the field, uh, women make up roughly one quarter of the world's cybersecurity workforce, according to an April survey, uh, cybersecurity training by ISC, a cybersecurity training company. So that's uh, 21.5% of all cybersecurity analysts that are women, while 78.5% are men. And the average age of an employed cybersecurity analyst is 42 years old. So in 2021, women earned 95 percent of what men earn. So clearly there is there's work to be done um, in that in that area as well. Uh, women in cybersecurity are also younger. 45% are millennials versus three, 33% of men. So this suggests that in the coming years, women have a shot at making the cybersecurity field uh, more diverse. Uh, again here this is the US um, a U.S. Uh, statistics from the United States. Uh, so the it, it's similar in Canada, but I mean it, this is this is more focused on the United States. So um, and that's about diversity in the cybersecurity field. So today, cybersecurity professionals know that the best solutions come from diverse teams, and having people of different backgrounds and experiences working together on a problem creates the best, uh, most effective uh, solutions. Diversity provides access to a a greater range of talent. It provides greater insight into clients' needs, and it helps open doors to new markets and helps make a company more profitable and resilient. So if we look here, um, we can see that um, the most common ethnicity for cybersecurity analysts is, well, 72.6% are white, uh, again, in the United States, followed by 9% uh, Latino and 8% Black or African American. And 9% of all cybersecurity security analysts, uh, again, according to the U.S. Um, 
to that U.S. Uh, census is uh, our LGBT. So what can we do to align our skills with the demand? So it's important to notice that unlike what most people might believe, cybersecurity is not, and I think that this is really, really important to note. Um, most people, when they hear the word cybersecurity, it's automatic that it is just a technical field. So it's important to note that uh, unlike what most people believe, cybersecurity is not just a field for individuals with technical expertise. There's so many roles and positions for technical for non-technical individuals. Uh, I, for one, I'm a cyber uh, engagement advisor with a background in, with without a background in um, computer related expertise at all. Uh, so this is uh, this is also one of the issues for which we'd like to raise um, awareness in general is that cybersecurity is a field for people with different backgrounds and different fields, uh, not just technical. Uh, so, so prepare yourself for your students with uh, market-ready skills using nationally, nationally recognized standards and learning outcomes um, created by your peers in the, in the industry. The Canadian Cybersecurity Skills Framework, and that, by the way, it, it, is, it has not been published yet, but it will be published uh, soon on the Canadian Center of Cybersecurity's website. Uh, so I invite you to, you know, check in. Uh, I invite you to, to check our website uh, out, but also to check in and see the, um, once it's published, the Canadian Cybersecurity Skills Framework. So it aligns with the robust and detailed U.S. National Initiative on Cybersecurity uh, Education the cybersecurity work, workforce uh, framework, but it also provides an organizational security lens and addresses unique Canadian labor market needs. Um, so this framework will be, uh, be will better guide cybersecurity workforce development and actions that will support the business and uh, the industry. Canadian businesses and industries are really struggling to meet their cybersecurity needs, and there are four key workforce development challenges. So the first one is generating and retaining cybersecurity operations talent to meet the needs of the Canadian labor market. Uh, the second challenge is ensuring contributing technical and non-technical roles uh, have required knowledge, skills, um, and abilities. The third challenge is being responsive to the changing technology landscape. And the fourth challenge is normalizing cybersecurity work and activities uh, within the Canadian workplace. So this is more uh, per, uh, this is more a uh, particular to pertinent in Canada, which is a cybersecurity general generalist uh, role. So within many small and medium organizations, and even within large organizations in Canada that are not heavily reliant on internet-based activities, there are individuals that are tasked with cybersecurity responsibilities who may not have an IT or cybersecurity background because of the lack of, 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 of that skill. And so given the number of small and medium organizations in Canada, um, this represents a large, a very large cadre of individuals within the Canadian labor market that have primary responsibility for establishing and managing cybersecurity uh, within their organizations, but may not have any of the discrete roles as defined uh, in the NICE or the Canadian framework. So typically, um, they will uh, perform cybersecurity functions on a part-time basis in conjunction with other responsibilities. They will uh, only require um, cyber secure, security knowledge and skills commensurate with their business, uh, the technical and the threat context. And they're not considered cybersecurity professionals. And so they do not have a cybersecurity career trajectory. So in absence of a term, this document uses security general, generalists to differentiate them from cybersecurity specialists identified within the core roles. So the security generalist within an organizational setting is typically um, not a specialist in any security area, but is often responsible for or personnel or physical or contract and loss prevention security activities, uh, as well as cybersecurity. So it's not uncommon, for example, for the chief executive officer or the chief information officer or the chief financial officer or the corporate security officer um, 
the human resources manager or senior administrative official to assume such a role. Um, common tasks uh, of, a, of a cybersecurity generalist include accessing, uh, assessing sorry, the organization's cybersecurity posture, uh, facilitating identification of organizational uh, cyber risks, uh, identifying non-technical cybersecurity controls, identifying and liaising with technical experts, internal or, ex or external, on uh, technical controls, developing organizational cybersecurity plans and policies, advising leadership on security uh, awareness and training, and uh, monitoring and supporting technical experts, uh, whether in-house or outsourced, in their cybersecurity functions. So um, I just want to um, mention the National Occupational Standards, um, and that's a Governor of Canada website that describes what an individual in a particular occupation must know uh, and be able to do to be considered capable in the occupation. So these standards are defined in terms of competencies, including knowledge, skills, and abilities required uh, to the related work uh, to do the related work effectively, safely, and properly. So the National Occupational Classification provides a benchmark for uh, competent performance in the workplace as agreed to, be, uh, as agreed to by a representative sample of workers, uh, employers, and other stakeholders. Uh, the National Occupational Classification uh, may also include or be driven by other external requirements such as um, legal, legal or policy compliance. So um, I invite you, if it's something that interests you, uh, to look at the National Occupation uh, Classification uh, provided by the Government of Canada. So I'll quickly talk, and I know I'm sort of starting to run out of time here, but I'll quickly speak about our publications. So uh, the Cyber Center has been increasing their publications, and as I said, in the last uh, two two years, uh, I've I've seen um, an increase in, in the publications since I joined. So uh, um, certification employ uh, employers uh, value. So there, it's a great way to kickstart your career as um, they are focused on ensuring you have the skills required to do the, um, the job. So make sure you figure out which one will be best for, you, for uh, your chosen career path. Um, some of our publications include the Canadian Cyber Skills uh, Framework that I mentioned earlier will be out on our website uh, hopefully soon. Uh, the Workforce Development and Curriculum Guide. Uh, uh, post-secondary cybersecurity related programs guide and uh, the rest that um, are the ones that you can see uh, up on the uh, up on the slide. So the cybersecurity career guide, this is the the most viewed um, publication and it'll give you an insight into why cybersecurity is one of today's most in-demand fields and provides information on the different types of jobs available, uh, career pathways and training and education options. And there hasn't been a better time to pursue a career in cybersecurity, honestly, than, than right now. Uh, this also is a tool developed by TechNation, and it's built specifically with Canadian data. So uh, it's a career finder tool, and it uh, finds possible career pathways according to your uh, interests and skills. It'll offer a heat map of an, or an overview of, of current jobs and demand. Of course, the one with the most job uh, availability is, is in the Toronto area, as you as you might have um, as you might have guessed. <laughs> uh, there's a job uh, map feature that gives you insight on the number of job openings, and so it is a very um, it's an interesting um, it's an interesting tool, the Canadian um, the Career Finder tool um, with Canadian data in mind. So you've decided to make a, the jump and enroll in a cybersecurity program. Well, now, now what you ask? So I'll be, will I be able to find a job in the field after after school if I have no work experience in cybersecurity? Well, the odds are in your favor. Um, consider this: graduate cybersecurity programs tend to be quickly recruited by public and private sector organizations. Um, in fact, the shortage of cybersecurity professionals is so pronounced that organizations are re uh, retraining employees in basic cybersecurity skills on the job. So as a skilled graduate of a cybersecurity program, you are sure to be an attractive candidate for many employers. 
Uh, but to increase your odds, there are a few things that you can do, So, such as networking, getting a LinkedIn account and starting connecting with people in the industry, starting to connect with people in the industry, uh, understanding the basics of IT, so the fundamentals of IT, such as administering and configuring um, systems, networks, database management, coding, uh, and so on. Um, focus your interests. So it's possible to be an expert. It's impossible to be an expert uh, in all categories. So try to focus on um, an, a specific area, such as networking security uh, and understanding it well, for instance. Uh, think ahead five to 10 years to your uh, dream job. Then look for an entry-level position that will give you the right skills. Um, and also gain practical experience. So gain as much as you can um, hands-on experience. A co-op position or an internship uh, will help you get a sense of IT procedures and real-world uh, business operations. Um, and stay informed of uh, cyber tools. Um, so, so CC student jobs, um, we have uh, are unlike most others. So our students work on meaningful projects that have an impact on the country. And they also build uh, personal connections uh, that last beyond their student years. Our main objective is to reach, re retain our students as full-time employees after their studies. Uh, so to be part of CSC student program, you must be registered full-time in a Canadian college or university. And if you're interested in a student position with CSC, please note that you, uh, you must submit your application eight months prior to the start of your desired placement. Um, that obviously is because of uh, because students at CSC must go uh, like all employees at CSC must go through a rigorous uh, security clearance process, uh, which takes about uh, six months to complete. We also hire a limited number of students for special projects, so these positions are sometimes offered remotely or in Ottawa, uh, but not on, on the CSC campus. You must you must apply for a CSC special project four months before the the start of your work placement. Also, CSC participates um, and attends a wide range of career career fairs, so you know to help answer all your questions. But you can also um, you can also check the uh, CSC uh, website and the Canadian Center for Cybersecurity website. So um, learn more more about the various work roles. So the workforce framework for cybersecurity, the NICE framework, uh, it provides a set of building blocks. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you. Can you have uh, two more minutes to leave opportunity sure, for I'll, them to ask? Absolutely, I'll, I'll, I'll wrap up. So um, the NICE framework provides a set of building blocks for describing the tasks and knowledge and skills that need to uh, that are needed to perform cybersecurity work and uh, by individuals and teams. So these blocks uh, can be used for work roles uh, that are not job titles, but rather a way of describing a group of work for which um, someone is responsible uh, or accountable. So the NICE framework has 52 work roles uh, divided into seven categories. I will not go into those, but uh, I, I invite you to take a look at the NICE, uh, at the NICE framework uh, on the website. The last thing I'd like to mention um, is the academic outreach newsletter. So um, we on our team have an academic newsletter. Um, we have two editions that have been um, published so far. And uh, it basically, it helps you stay in touch and learn more about our publications, events, resources, career fairs, and, you know, um, and so on. So if you would like to subscribe, uh, please just email us. Uh, I'll provide the, uh, the email at the end. Um, I will not go into this because of time, but we have other um, events such as Geek Week, Geek Peak, uh, Geek Peak Capstone. So these are all um, these are all events that the Canadian Center for Cybersecurity uh, offers. Uh, you can you can see those on on the Cyber Center's website. Um, so I invite you to take a look at those and see if that could be these are uh, activities that could be beneficial for you. Uh, so at the end. Um, the, that is the email to uh, uh, if you would like if you're interested um, uh, in the newsletter please email us at the email that you see on the slide um, the bottom line is you don't need to be highly technical or understand the inner workings of a computer work in cybersecurity 
uh, you just need to understand the basics of cyber se- of the cybersecurity ecosystem. So um, with that, I think I will conclude. Um, and sorry for taking a little bit longer than um, a little bit longer than uh, the time I had, but uh, I'd be happy to answer any of your questions. And uh, if there, are, so if, if you have any questions, please um, you know feel free to ask. And uh, I also have uh, Marie Claude Belanger, my supervisor, um, who will also be answer uh, be able to answer any questions if uh, if there are any. Uh, thank you all for the opportunity, um, and thank you, uh, Dr. Abdullah. Uh, uh, thank you so it. much for your interesting talk and for all this important information. So it's time to take two or three uh, small questions. Do we have any questions? Yes, Angie, please go ahead. Hey Mo, uh, thank you. My name is Nji. I work for the Office of the Information and Privacy Commissioner in Alberta, and I'm also a seasonal instructor at Concordia University for the uh, uh, Master of Information System Security program. The question I do have for you is, by the way, thank you a lot for the information you provided to us. Uh, there are a lot that we didn't know about your organization, but now I think we're well informed and ready to go for additional information. Uh, in regards to the fact that it's a um, Government of Canada organization, and I know that uh, the Government of Canada is very keen on providing information to both uh, the English and the French speakers. What is the language requirement uh, for working at uh, your organization, if you, if you don't mind, if there's any? Uh, yes, thank you for the question. So, uh, correct, that's something I did not mention, but indeed, um, the Government of Canada does um, provide uh, the information to all Canadians in both official languages. Uh, however, it's important to note that uh, we have positions that are, so depending on the position that you'll be working in, there are positions that are bilingual imperative. Um, but there are also uh, many positions uh, at the Cyber Centre and at CSC where it is just um, it's just English. Uh, so not everybody is uh, bilingual at CSC. And there are certain posi- positions only that are required to be um, a bilingual um, position. And so that that also is a, a plus as in, you know, there are individuals that are able to apply regardless of the um, of the official, regardless of the official language of their of their choice. Okay, thank you very much. Just a follow up question. If somebody has a basic uh, is say is proficient in one of the languages, say perhaps French or English. Let me call, use the word English, and then uh, has some basic knowledge of French and would like to upgrade to a standard where that individual can use French as a second language or maybe equivalent to English to serve customers. Are there any incentive in terms of uh, training that the government gives to? for that kind of people to upgrade their language to deliver that it's required? Yes, so they do. Uh, there are, um, once you join, there are courses that are available and the government will actually send you on um, these courses if you want to take the other language of, of your choice. And then there is testing. Once uh, you once you do the test, um, depending on the, uh, the your level of proficiency, uh, you're able to, um, your, there are certain incentives. So not just the courses, but the incentives are also, they have bilingual incentives. And so it's um, usually a specific amount a year for individuals that are proficient in, in both official languages. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have a question from Prishan. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, Mo. It's uh, Breck and Piper here. Um, I just left the Canadian Armed Forces. Um, we have stood up our cyber trade, uh, also all based in the national capital region, just like CSE. Uh, we had a lot of skilled applicants who were turned off by the fact they'd have to move to Ottawa or could not afford living in Ottawa on uh, on our pay rates. Do you guys have any similar issues where having both your headquarters buildings uh, in the same city in a high cost of living area um, prevents you getting applicants? Yes. So this has been an issue and it's actually an ongoing issue for um, individuals, for employees uh, that are currently working. So I'll give you myself as an example. I I was in Ottawa for the last 10 years. I am now based out of Quebec City. Uh, Since the beginning of the pandemic, they uh, allowed us to at least 
on a temporary basis. We still don't know. There is a pilot project going on, and we are waiting for um, a decision from the senior executives at CSC to see whether they will allow um, remote working. Um, so I know that they recognize that this is an issue because a lot of people um, were interested in joining the organization, but were not able to work. Um, were not able to move to Ottawa. So this is something that we are um, uh, that senior management is looking into uh, to allow individuals to work, especially on the cyber side. I mean, the signals intelligence side, it's impossible because it's all classified information that cannot leave the building. But on the cyber side, um, it's unclassified um, work. So. Uh, they're looking into allowing um, individuals, but a final decision has not been made yet. I, from what I know, is that there should be one uh, by the beginning of, by the end of this fiscal year. Thank you, Masoud. Please, please go ahead. Yes, uh, I have a question. Uh, for example, the uh, that uh, your you company likes, uh, it's just managing for like entire. Like uh, what, as just mentioned in a CIC website, there is a code for the cybersecurity and network uh, something. You just uh, like it's there, and you're maintaining how the shortage and people are required. So how really you know people they're hiring from outside and inside. They might might be people coming from the outside uh, for the immigration purpose. They just you know uh, put the file based on you can say a, a cybersecurity, and they come here and they change the job to something else. So how you are just managing it really if the gap is just filling up in the, in, in that scenario? Uh, honestly, I cannot speak to that specific. Like I cannot speak to that specific or these specific uh, instances where people do that. Um, and, but that's that's one of our mandates. That that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to work with other government of Canada departments. So it's not just on our side to try to um, figure out ways. To address issues like that, um, I honestly wouldn't be able, um, at my level, to give you an answer on what exactly is being done uh, to avoid instances like that or situations like that. But I can tell you that what we're trying to do right now is work as much as possible with the other government departments uh, to try to address issues uh, just like the one you mentioned. Thank you. One last question from Omoklet. Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, Mokled, are you asking? Okay. Hello? Yeah. Hello? Yeah, so it is believed that we are moving closer to, uh, to the breakthrough of quantum technology, right? So my question is, uh, and I read an article, uh, the government, uh, becoming increasingly, uh, you know, uh, I mean, uh, concerned that uh, the bad actors are getting uh, confidential data and storing them uh, and waiting for the breakthrough of quantum te technology. So what is uh, the signal doing and what, uh, what is the advice to private enterprises on how to, you know, mitigate that risk? Thank you. Uh, so anything that would, uh, again, because I, I am under the academic outreach program, uh, anything that is related to advice and guidance, I would honestly, um, I think that the best thing would be to reach out to the cyber center directly that would be able to uh, send you to the right team for that. So I can speak directly to anything related to academic outreach, but in terms of anything that has to do with regards to advice and, and guidance, I would invite you to um, reach out with your questions uh, to the Cyber Center. And uh, I can guarantee you that there is, um, you know, questions are being answered, uh, questions that, that we receive uh, at the front door service are being answered. And um, you could maybe have a more tailored um response uh, to your question because I honestly um, yeah I don't think that I would uh, unless it's regarded it, you know unless it's directly related to academic outreach I wouldn't be able to uh, attempt to venture uh, and tr try to answer that one okay great so thank you again so much uh, Mo for this interesting presentation and thank you Maria for helping us organizing this session today thank you all for being with us today and we hope to see you again in our info uh, sex seminar on November 17 at 12 p.m.
Thank, thank you. you very much, Dr. Abdullah, and thank you all for, for attending and for this opportunity. Thank you. Stop recording.